Hi, I'm Ken Steele, and welcome back to another 10 with Ken. This week, we take you inside the biggest post-secondary consumer show in North America, the Ontario University's Fair. Attracting more than 120,000 students and parents every year, this is the second largest event held at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. In this special extended episode, let's start with a broad overview of OOF, why it matters, and how it's evolved since its inception almost 20 years ago. Let's take a bit more than 10 and take a look. The sheer scale of OOF offers an unparalleled opportunity to see dozens of universities and thousands of students interacting. Whenever my schedule permits, I make a point of attending, and in the past dozen years, I've made it to at least 10 OOFs. In fact, on the Eduvation website, you'll find my field reports documenting new developments at the 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 Ontario Universities Fairs. In 2013, my daughter and I shot my first video ever at the OOF, and now two years later, I'm back with podcast director John Mathias and much better audio equipment. In the exhibit hall this year, plenty remains unchanged since 2013. In fact, 15 university booths appear to be pretty much identical to those we recorded two years ago. Three exhibits appear to have been updated or reskinned with new brand identities, including Ryerson, Lakehead, and York, and we'll examine these in more detail in a future episode, along with brand new booth designs for Trent, UOIT, and the University of Windsor. Of course, what I really love about OOF is that it offers me a great opportunity to catch up with friends and colleagues from universities across the province, from senior administrators to frontline recruiters. In our conversations, I always learn fascinating things about trends in university programs, facilities, marketing, and recruitment. And over the next few episodes, we'll share some examples with you. We're at the York University booth talking with Jock Fippen. We're back at the Brock University booth, and we're talking with Barb Davis. So we're here with Craig Chips at the Laurier University booth. Gene Mullen, the Director of Undergraduate Recruitment at Carleton University. Dina McQuarrie, University of Guelph. Joe Stokes, Associate Registrar at UOIT. We're at the Laurentian University booth, and I've cornered Dominic Giroux, the University President. We're here at the University of Windsor booth with President Alan Wildeman. We're here at the Lakehead University booth with President Brian Stevenson. We're at the Trent University booth with its new President, Leo Grork. I may have been to 10 oofs, but let's see if we can't crowdsource even greater experience. I've been coming to the fair, this is my eighth year. Well, this is my sixth year. That would be the seventh edition this is OUF number nine for me. This is actually my 10th anniversary. Uh, I guess this is my 13th or 14th fair. For the last 16 years, I've been at every Toronto fair. Oh boy, do I really have to say that number? Well, no. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> every single one of them since they started. Uh, I've been to the fair since the very beginning, so I've been here for many, many years. Yeah. So with more than a century of experience at the university's fair, how would these experts tell us the fair has evolved? So you've, you've seen this fair evolve and grow over that time. How would you describe the change? Well, it's certainly in scope. I mean, the, the, the footprint of the fair has, has become massive. It's gotten bigger. Well, I think increased attendance overall at the fair. I, I've noticed a lot of uh, uh, schools have increased their footprints uh, this year. So maybe not new booths necessarily, but uh, increasing the size. And that just speaks to the volume of students that we see every year. It is a crush and uh, universities are looking to, to maximize their, their footprint so that we can talk to more students. This, this booth is virtually double the size of, of the, our previous booth. Well, I think we're making a greater effort to uh, uh, sell the university and its unique uh, programs and the unique experience. You know, I, I think everybody's upping their game, you know. I think what we hear all the time is the connection that the students and the parents make with our faculty and our students that we bring on the floor. So I think everybody's bringing a little bit more of their faculty and staff here now. I think uh, the number of people that universities bring to the fair to answer whatever questions students have, that's increased enormously. Yeah, we've got hundreds of people here, uh, to be honest. We've, we've got all of our faculties represented, and in some cases, uh, the faculties have brought as many as 20, 25 students. So one of the things I see, I see a lot more of our students coming and being a part of the fair. 
because they're the best ambassadors for what our universities are doing. Deans, faculty, staff, some alumni, we have over 100. When you really want to say what your university is doing, you want to represent that lifetime of experience. So let's have the students, let's have the faculty, let's showcase some of our alumni. They really reflect the huge diversity at the University of Windsor campus. We have people from all over the world. All the students are wearing shirts that label their program on their chest, so one of the things that happens is when a prospective student or family enters the room, if they're interested in science or engineering, they can right away identify with another student who's currently at the university in their program, and that's worked really well for us. It looks like color-coded t-shirts by faculty has become the new standard at OOF, and you can see this at other booths such as the University of Ottawa and the University of Waterloo. If current students bring youthful energy and enthusiasm to the fair, alumni bring the voice of experience and examples of positive educational outcomes. In our, uh, in our presentation room on the, uh, the next level up, we've got uh, recruiters and students, but we also have some alumni that are uh, contributing to the presentation, talking about their experience as alumni, what, what they're doing now. We're showcasing some of our most famous alumni, like uh, Melissa Bishop, who of course, was incredibly successful at the Commonwealth Games and the World Track and Field Championships. They are mounting an effort to sort of recreate a campus here with, with a lot of the same people that you would meet if you were on a campus. I think it's very healthy that it's gone beyond sort of the professional recruitment people and maybe the administrators right. to bringing all sorts of faculty and all sorts of students uh, who are really here as resources for the, the parents and students and visitors who are walking around the fair. So in recent years, the growth of the fair has been as much about universities bringing more stakeholders with them as about increased attendance. But those students who are attending have changed as well. Um, the balance has shifted as well. I think it used to be that Friday was the big day because a lot of schools would leverage the opportunity to bus students in. It's not as easy to throw kids on a bus and bring them downtown Toronto. It's a lot more of a complicated exercise logistically. So we see days like today, the Friday that we're at, a little bit less busy. As a result, Saturday more than makes up for it. I think we've seen a definite increase in the volume of parents who are attending and taking an active role in the university process. So what I can tell you is that the parents have become way more involved and sometimes they're the ones actually asking the questions. I think there, there is. There, there's always been active parent involvement uh, in, in the decision. We know that parents are, are real influencers uh, of the decision. I'm, I'm always uh, heartened to see the families when mom and dad comes and the student steps forward and, and engages and asks a lot of the questions. So I think that you are seeing diversity in the audience. This used to be catered specifically for high school, but transfer students from colleges and other universities, adult students. I would say the thing that's changed the most is the grade 10 students, the grade 11 students that are here, I think the pre-research, and that's driven both, I think, by the students, it's certainly by their parents as well. The pre-research and the younger demographics you see, they're starting their intensive research much earlier in the game. I've been also seeing more uh, potential applicants coming from grade 11 and grade 10 even. Mm. So I think that's been a shift over the last few years. So if the OOF audience has changed, have the questions they ask. I think the students are better informed, more than ever. Uh, they've done their research, obviously, with what's available on the web. I've been quite impressed over the years to see uh, the degree of preparation that students have. The students and families come really prepared. They know the questions that they need to get answered. Students use it in a more sophisticated way than they used to. I've noticed that this time around, that students and their parents have come better prepared with questions and what they need to know. Students are becoming more and more prepared. Now they're coming with a bit more confidence. Guidance counselors are preparing them with lists of questions to ask, oh, really? which is really helpful. So what are, the, what are the top questions that they come to ask you? Lots of times it's about the admission requirements okay. for the program. Yeah. Students want to ensure they're taking the right courses. They still want to know the averages, of course, to right. get in. What courses do I need for X program? What grades do I need? Are there supplemental applications that are required? If so, for which programs? When will you make offers of admission? The way we do our event, it's the Super Bowl, but it's at the beginning of the season. So you're getting a lot of preliminary questions. I would say that students are much more concerned about careers than they used to be. I think sometimes too concerned. If you look at it from their point of view, I do understand it. And 
Uh, the issue is we have a youth unemployment crisis and that instills fear in students and young people and their parents just as much. And then I guess the key thing is, well, they get a job. What's the opportunities? So a lot of it is around money, jobs, and that's being asked a lot more of it. Our programs are very unique, so we want to convey that uh, our, our academic offerings are market-driven and that our disciplines lead to, uh, lead to employment and a job. What kind of a job can I get when I graduate? It's a reflection of the shifting dialogue in society in general. There's also a situation you run across where the, the students and the families seem stressed or anxious about how to make the right choice. And so we spend a lot of time, at least I do, uh, talking with the students and families and sort of bringing them down a, a bit and uh, uh, trying to make it uh, the decision process for them is, is, as comfortable as possible. I think one of the things that's changing is there's a lot more dialogue with students about the whole university experience. They care about athletics, about clubs, how are they going to be able to get involved, volunteering opportunities, uh, co-ops, internships, all those things that that are going to enrich their experience. Uh, our, all of our co-op programs, there's a, more of an interest, I think, too, in service learning, uh, opportunities on student exchange, what they can do to get involved, volunteerism. Mental health, uh, disabilities, and it could just be that, that, that people are more open to disclosing and talking about this kind of thing, but it's, it's been fairly strong, the, uh, the, the demand and the need. Uh, it's, it's just so important for us that all of us that do this work to remember um, we've answered these questions for 15, 16, 17 years. It's, you're quickly reminded when you meet the first parent of the morning, it's their, if, if it's their first child going through, they don't have a clue, this is their first time. And so we get, we get a lot of that and you have to be really thoughtful about that and how you, how you engage right. it. So in its 19 year history, the Ontario University's Fair has grown, the audience has broadened, and representatives of the universities have proliferated. Questions have evolved from admission requirements to career outcomes, experiential learning, and specific supports. OOF's importance has expanded and intensified, too. This year, the Council of Presidents isn't meeting in Toronto adjacent to the fair, but you're still here, so I'm guessing that means you're committed to the fair. What, what brings you to the fair each year? Uh, this is really the start of the recruitment season for all universities. Uh, I think it's partly important to be here because our institutions depend on attracting students. It's important for us because as a university, half of our students now come from outside Northeast Ontario. Mm -hmm. So we're increasingly attracting students from, and that will increase. So it's important for us to put our best foot forward and to engage with students and their parents in such a meaningful and visible way. I love coming here. It's a lot of energy. It's, uh, it's a, an, an important time because, you know, uh, Three months ago, I was at convocation uh, saying goodbye to everybody, and here I want to say hello to people. So. But OOF is important to participants for much more than just building relationships with prospective students. It's important for me to be here, partly because that shows the faculty and the staff that uh, this is an important event, so that's why I'm here. I thoroughly enjoy OOF, uh, meeting with students, meeting with the parents, and spending time with our students, faculty, and staff. We come on the bus together. We go back on the bus together. I go down on the bus with the students because that's the funnest uh, way to come down. Excellent. And I had 20 students on the bus with me, so from all the different programs. It's one of many ways for a president to build a positive organizational culture. So that's why uh, investing time in youth is important to me. But I also think that as a sector, this is when the universities present themselves to the general public. And actually, you talk to people here, and of course, many of them are prospective students, but some of them are just interested in universities. The level of interest at the provincial level government in terms of how post-secondary is delivering and the value it's providing taxpayers, and specifically students as stakeholder groups, that level of interest has increased. And this event, with the spotlight shining as brightly as it does, is a point where they are really looking to this event as the microcosm for the totality of what we do. I'm a real believer in the Toronto Fair. I think it's something special that we have. The OOF is indeed special and we shot hours and hours of footage this year, so we wanted to start with this 15-minute special report. In future episodes of 10 with Ken, we'll show you some more detail about booth designs, contests, data collection, and social media tactics. 
We'll also share with you some discussions we captured about what's hot in programs and new facilities, and more. Next time, we'll start by looking at a growing variety of ways universities have sought to bring their campus to life in Toronto. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. Please subscribe to the Eduvation channel on YouTube or the 10 with Ken podcast on iTunes. For exclusive early access, subscribe to my email newsletter, The Eduvation Loop. I hope to see you next time. Welcome back to another 10 with Cat. Yeah, 10 with Cat. Welcome back to another 2015. No. All right. We're at the York University booth talking with Jock Ficken. Fit. See, this is this is how my podcast goes. <sighs> Welcome back to another t something. Welcome back to another t 10 with two tap chibi doop two. Tap, chibi, doop, two.